Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Arlith in the Neverwinter Nights private server. Private, it's not really private, it's a public server. It's a, it's a server anyway. And this is going to be the second uh, roleplay session that I have recorded. I can't remember when I recorded this. It's been a while. A fair while, in fact. That since I actually played the game, uh, or this particular session. But I will do my best to remember what, what is going on. And hopefully you will see things that you like and find interesting. And I will do my best to explain them as we go along. So we're back as my mage character, sorcerer. Uh, true flame is the path that you choose in order to become this sorcerer. Gazbaran is is uh, a, a true flame magus who can cast spells as many times as he likes per day, apart from, well, epic spells and certain spells that are, I think, higher than level 6. They require uh, components to use, but there's no daily uh, daily charges that you spend, unlike normal mages. And the, the only limitation is that you're restricted to evocation spells. I find this part funny because we <laughs> we take <laughs> place your pets. <laughs> I just find this really interesting how we sort of find ourselves having a, a wolverine fight a, a fully grown deer and then it just <laughs> they just both of us the person i'm with lucrezia salvatore uh, and myself just take the moment to to watch this this battle of of these animals and i just found it really amusing and the reactions of that characters as well i fear we may be here all day yeah uh, this is this is fun for me as well because I don't remember all the bits that happen. I don't remember the dialogue so well, but I always enjoy good dialogue, and I had a lot of fun playing with this person uh, and the character they were role playing. So I, I think they got on quite well. Uh, and in fact, this is a very lengthy, lengthy uh, role play session. We're currently quite close to the Iron Mines. I'm not sure if you recognize it. It's like right behind that hill over there, behind us. But we're going towards a different area called Gambler's Bluff, which is a notoriously uh, uh, banded, uh, banded infested. So what I tend to do as Gazbaran is I tend to put up darknesses and then hide in there whilst I cast cast my spells. The, the the current question I have is whether or not I should I should be affected by my own darkness because that is normally the case. Whenever you use darkness, you have to have the spell Ultra Vision on you, but that doesn't seem to be a requirement whenever I use my darkness, which is fine. Or I think I still retain some sort of a mischance whilst I'm in it, but I don't. I can still see as far. I'm not blinded completely by the darkness when I step in. So, we have slain a bunch of the bandits on the outskirts, and we're heading into into the actual fort that they have palisade, as it was referred to earlier. Now... What was I saying? Oh yes, um... I was speaking of the sorcerer class, or path of the sorcerer, the path of 
True Flame. Since I last played, they have added another, another sort of um, sorcerer type, which is the Spell Weaver. And the way they work is that they also don't use charges. They have unlimited charges per day, so they can cast as many spells as they like without resting. But the difference between the two is that spell weavers have cooldowns based on the level of the spell they use. So a level one spell has X amount of rounds, like say three rounds or six rounds cooldown. And then uh, a level two spell has uh, two times the, the whatever rounds it is, three or six. I can't really remember for sure. But they have cooldowns on their spells. And I find that really interesting that it's, there's, there's a lot of, I always find, found mages really tedious to play because a lot of the time you have, well, in this, in this case, I would have seven spells to use and both of them would share the charges. So I, I mean, I have, I have three spells on my hot, hot bar right there. And whenever I use the ones with the sevens on them, it would it would take up a charge from that, and then uh, I could use three darkness spells per day. And after that, I would have to rest. And the problem with resting in this uh, on the server is that whenever you rest, you have your rest bar, and if it's higher than fifty percent, then you can't rest at all. Uh, unless you're in the tavern, which of course you won't be in when you're fighting, but you have to you're you're strictly limited to saving up spells for when you need them and then using whatever weapon you have. In this case, I have a spear as an alternative weapon. Not that I really need it because I can cast unlimited spells, but that's something to bear in mind. Most mages have either slings or crossbows, I believe. And uh, that's what they have to resort to for the majority of the early levels. Once they get to the higher levels, they have so many spells that it doesn't really matter. But the early leveling as a mage who isn't a true flame or a spell weaver is, is very tedious and quite boring, in fact. It is so restricted, in a way. The reason I re-summon my, uh, my magical dagger that flies and fights things on its own is because the duration was, is quite short and it was already running out because I'd used it uh, up top. I, was, I summoned it to the, up the hill so I, it could fight up there whilst we were out of range. And this, this is a fairly common area for levels four and above I think and four and six or something like that I think levels four and six I'd say before that you go to the iron mines the the cobbled infested area which was where we were trying to get to last session but we never got around to it we did kill some cobbles so those sorts of things you can expect in the caves and of course there's a special boss in the in the iron mines the the bandit hideout doesn't really have one all right so she's gone brb and i believe this is where i where i jump cut to uh, another part of the area right we are in another area this is quite this is right outside on the other side of the hideout it's kind of, kind of hard to tell because you didn't see the in-between, but basically there's uh, the cave system and then you come out uh, on the coast, on the cave. And now we're uh, near this m memorial place. You can pause and read that if you like. Uh, that's These are all player-made fixtures and decorations and so on, like the altar and the statue are, in, are there in place of a player-made... Uh, faction called Knights of the Road, and they they mem commemorate older characters that have since passed on. 
um, whether through losing their 10 lives that you have on a Mark of Death, uh, Mark of Destiny character. Mark of Destiny is an experience boost whilst limiting your lives to 10. And, uh, well, the, al the alternative is that the player simply decided to give up playing that character and uh, retired it of his own, his or her own uh, accord. So, we're fighting cobbles again, and this this area is quite close to a troll, cle troll cave as well, so it's not uncommon to find some trolls as well, which are quite tough because they have regeneration. And I believe they recently updated it so that you might have to either burn or use acid fire or acid to burn the bodies so that they don't keep regening which is which is the way trolls are in in the D&D world you have to have some some way of burning the bodies so that they don't get to regenerate back back up to full so that's a cool is it cool feature I made a poor decision of actually trying to eat this banana whilst recording. Don't do that. Um, now we're arriving at a really sweet spot. Um, well, they were just passing it, really. Uh, that is the Memorial of the Fallen Mages. All the Archmages of the Arcane Tower that uh, resides in somewhere in the woods of Arolith. It's inland somewhere. It's not too far away, but all the all the old old archmage archmages with descriptions of them. All of them have their uh, like a statue of them, a representation of them in the in this here little area. And I I'd like to point out that this is all player made. But recently, they updated this area because it's stood there for so long that the developers of this module decided to make it permanent. So they took out all the fixtures that normally you can pick up and carry away. Um, they they made them permanent. They just it's now a part of the the land, the module itself. So you can't remove them in any way. Which is, I think, is a really good feature, feature, gesture uh, from the from the developers to actually do that. So <laughs> I was enthralled by the statues. Yes. So we're currently finding out what this place is. Is this some sort of a camp? I'm asking what we're doing here. Lucretia, I believe, is trying to do a resupply. I'm not entirely sure if this is the... Yeah, this is the Knight of the Road uh, headquarters. So, this is where they reside. We're trying to find out more information about the Knights of the Road. Because personally, I, I have no idea who they are. <laughs> Nightly things on the road. What do we strive for? Nightly things on the road.
So while while she is gathering supplies and doing whatever it is she's doing, I believe we're going to get uh, to take a look at some of the some of the stuff in the camp. Gasbaran is, of course. May <laughs> make yourself as comfortable as you can. He glances meaning, glances at the clouds in a meaningful way. <laughs> you can't really get the too comfortable in the rain, but what can you do? I have a lot of loot, I just noticed. That's a bunch of stuff I could sell. I have a bounty head that I need to take to some to someone in town to get uh, the bounty. And I also have jewels to sell. These are player-owned shops, by the way, that I'm looking into. They have essences, apparently, and some healer's kits, poultices, that are extremely useful. I, did, I do actually need them on my travels. The one good thing about this character is that I have a very high strength, because spears require high strength. So what I've done is... Uh, I, what what that means is I can carry a lot of loot. And here we are uh, looking at <laughs> some of the player made altars and so on. Altar of Fellowship. I'm not, I'm not going to read it all aloud, but you can you can pause the video if you feel like it. Uh, the lights I'm standing on is a is a portable area. It's like a destination portal rather than you you can't portal anywhere from there, but you can you you can arrive at this place through a magical portal which is located in the arcane tower. Or if you have the I think it's the transmute transmutation feat. Uh, so as a mage you can you can get spell focuses, so there's um, all the spell schools, transmutation, conjuration, etc., etc., and these boost your your spells as well as your. I mean, it, it, mechanically, it it enhances the the difficulty checks of the of the spells in that particular school. But on top of that, the server has its own spells that you can use. So. I think transmutation allows you to use the chat command teleport, which offers you the choice of teleporting all, all to all the destinations that you visited. So whenever you get to a destination portal, you activate it, and then after that, you can always use that portal as your destination. And then uh, certain others, uh, conjuration, for instance, offers a boost to uh, a passive boost to all your summoned creatures which normally doesn't happen and then on top of that once you have the epic feat uh, uh, epic spell focus you get you can you get the chat command yoink which allows you to pull a person to you and it's like a magical uh, custom spell that you can use uh, of course they have to agree to it so you can't just troll people and pull them to you in dangerous places and so on. They have to, there's like a question, do you want to be pulled to this location? Blah, 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 etc, etc. But those are like custom spells that you can get. I think spell focus in necromancy offers you more skeletons per summoned skeleton. So if you normally summon one, you get two. And... Uh, three with greater spell focus, I think. And there's a lot of fun stuff. Divination gives you the ability to scry other players. So scrying, if you don't know, is uh, essentially magically spying on someone uh, by... Uh, sort of, you, you just get a vision of them. And how that works is you you arrive on the scene, essentially, but you're invisible and you can you can see what's happening uh, around this person. And scrying is probably one of the best and most interesting spells in in the game. Because you can do 
you can gain a lot of in-character roleplay information through scrying, which is uh, which is the best thing you could ask for, because then you can use that to your advantage in any way you like. You can create plots that would normally not happen or be possible because you didn't have the knowledge of of that specific character. Like listening into some sort of a meeting amongst uh, high-ranking politicians, you can spy on them and so on. And then, uh, what other spells are there? Let's see, Abjurbation, which is the defensive spell school line, allows you to use a special spell that shields you from any scrying attempts. So what happens is, whenever someone tries to scry you, it blocks them off, and uh, I think you get other, you get other benefits as well if you have. Let's see. I think Abjurbation also helps with Dispel. So whenever you try and Dispel someone's magical buffs, uh, you, can, you get to remove them more easily if you have Abjurbation spell school as your chosen, chosen spell school, which doesn't normally happen, I believe. I'm pretty sure you can't enhance your Dispels. But yeah, a lot of custom magical abilities are in the game. So that's quite cool. I really, I really like, like what you can do in the in the in the game. And I'd say mages have, for the longest time, had uh, a lot of the the best stuff because all the all the epic spell focuses offer you so many so many custom abilities that other classes just don't get at all. There are. Let's see, the, the latest uh, feature that comes to mind that's catered towards the more mundane classes is the guard ability. And guarding essentially allows you to block attacks for someone else. So whenever someone chooses to attack the target, you're, the person you're guarding, because whenever you, you type uh, dash guard and then you type uh, the name of the person you want to guard. What it does is that whenever someone attacks that target that you're guarding, it, the, the AI switches its focus to you as the tank, the person who's guarding, which is really cool. I like that. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the only feature that really come, comes to mind. Oh, Barbarians got a buff as well, or it's not really a buff, it's just an alternative path called the Tribesmen, and they can in, they can give up their Raging ability, which normally gives you, you bonus strength and constitution at the expense of armor class, uh, in, uh, for the ability to summon a Tribesman for... For, uh, for for a while to fight for you, to fight on your side, and they scale based on your barbarian level. And uh, they 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 carry two axes, which is the only difference. But they look like you. They share your race and they share the armor, the the armor style that you have. So you can customize your armor to f sort of fit, and then there's like two of you that are really sort of bulky Bavarian types or whatever you like, and then uh, it's it's quite cool because a lot of the early stuff, especially, you need yes. you need a good uh, companion to fight uh, fight for you in some areas if you can't if you can't find anyone else to fight with. Uh, so, I'll venture out with, and it's, uh, I quite like that feature, I quite like that, it's, it's, a, it's a cool addition, amongst many. Alright, so this is, this is where we get back to the caves now, we are in, we are in the, uh, in the cave that's underneath the, 
hideout. This, this, essentially, this leads to the place we were just now on the on the coastal line, and then the other cave entrance. And I believe we are now on our way to the actual hideout, the palisade that the that the bandits have. So, should be interesting. I mean, lots of bandits and a bunch of loot, I believe. Although, most of the loot that you get from there tends to be... Hmm. Tends to be locked in chests. So, possibly nothing for us, since none of us are. I think Lucretia is a cleric. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks that way. And he is blocking my spells. He's got uh, a magic shield around him, so he is immune to my magic missiles, which I quite resent, to be honest. The the good thing is he's not. He's the the shield doesn't block uh, wolf bites, so <laughs> we're good there. Looks like we're just going to go past it. Seems we're not actually going into the fort, but then again, there's still bandits here, so maybe we're maybe we're just clearing this area and moving on after that. Because of course that is efficient in terms of the experience that we want to get when you think about it. And this is where Lucretia suggests that we have a, we take a look at the crypts in in the Cordor Cemetery, which is an interesting area, to to be sure. I have not yet responded. I'm too preoccupied by this 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 bandit archer here. Unruly in a crypt. You can see, like, my, my thought process whenever I write the sentences. It tends to change all the time until I find the the funniest or which is sometimes it just takes so long that I feel like the moment has passed and then I just settle for a more neutral question or reply but whenever you get the sort of it's not it's not so much trying to be Trying to say something that's a joke all the time. It's just having the character have some sort of a self awareness to him as well. So he he listens and he actually notices uh, certain words that people use in the sentence and then you just turn it around in a funny way. I like that in characters. I'm just I I, spe I pay a special attention. Uh, special attention to to dialogue in 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 my role play sessions as well as in in books. I put a lot more thought into that compared to all the uh, all the detailed descriptions of of the world and so on. So whenever. Whenever I read Lord of the Rings, for instance, I felt like much of the books were completely wasted on me because I just didn't have the mental capacity to m imagine all the great places that were being described at me. I just, sp I just tried to find the dialogue that wasn't there. The dialogue was completely bland in most cases. 
At least in, in my view. Maybe you feel different. Uh, naturally, it should be dead and boring. But from what I hear, the Kodorian crypt system is... faulty. You mean it unlocked their caskets, that sort of thing? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> as, as though the dead were being really, <laughs> really bad neighbors or something, sort of, on their, on their worst behavior. <laughs> they do, but the robbers always have, always happen to have a counter. Ah, and does the dead r rise? Yes. Cool. So we're making our way towards this, this here crypt while slaying a number of a number of these these, these bandits. Not really creatures, you can't call them creatures. I mean, there's a dog in there, but a dog isn't a creature either. It's a dog. I'm pretty sure that Lucretia also has has the conjur conjuration spell focus. Because uh, what that does is it gives you an extra... What do you call it? <laughs> it it doesn't just boost the stats of your creatures. It allows you to summon a creature that's one level above the summon that you, summon spell that you use. So you summon a level one creature. Uh, uh, you use the sum, summon level one creature spell, but it summons a level two creature. So that gives you a clear advantage in the early levels as well. So we're back. We're going this isn't this is quite close to the the mines and the farmhouse that's the place so the farmhouses are to the west and oh look a bunch of wolverines what do you know and i don't remember if we made a stop in corridor or if we just went straight to the... because I've got a bunch of healers kits that I can still use. What you... you might have seen the red text pop up there. That means that the hand wraps in my hand, the, the gloves essentially, uh, broke somewhat, so they lost one durability, which happens during combat sometimes. It, uh, I don't think it ever breaks more than one durability at a time, and then once 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 they get close to being broken, you should take them to someone who can can fix them. So the way that would work is, in terms of gloves, you have tailors who can do that, and the difficulty check depends on the on the quality of the item. So if it's a really magical item, you'd need someone who's who's really good at tailoring in, in order to uh, be able to fix it. And then uh, armor and shields and weapons, you need forging. Uh, I don't really know. Okay, so there's... I would have said gems need art of artwork and so on, but I don't think they lose durability at all. So... It's only cloaks and boots and that sort of thing. 
anything made of cloth or leather that requires a tailor and anything made of more sturdier material like shields and that sort of thing require forging. Actually, I'm not sure if if small shields are made out of wood, so you might have to use a um, carpenter for that. But either way, we're killing cobbles again. You all know this place. If, assu assuming you've seen my previous video, you would recognize this place as as the uh, farmhouses that the cobbled sometimes habit. There's a cobbled chieftain in this particular uh, area that has uh, that you can get the bounty of and get extra gold if you pick up his. If you cut off his head and take it to one, one of the officials in town. When we return, would you like to split loot or keep what we have to ourselves? It is entirely up to, up to you. Ah, I don't mind sharing the spoils. So, sometimes, uh, throughout this whole thing, I've been picking up... Uh, whatever I can after I've seen someone, I mean her, Lucretia taking her share first off. So I've sort of looked at which of the loot he, she's she's picked up and so avoided that and so on. But sometimes you agree between yourselves that, okay, I will carry all the loot because I have the, I am the strongest person in this party, so I should be doing that and so on and so forth but uh, it's not it's all in character agreements you don't have to it can be kind of a douchebag thing to do if you leave your party before you before anyone has a chance to role play uh, the outcome of who gets the loot and so on how the loot is shared so but but sometimes you just sometimes people leave between the sessions as in you're still doing the dungeon or right as you're about to leave it's common courtesy to sort of bring it up i guess and not just barge off somewhere if you've been the one to pick up all the loot but that said it's also the responsibility of the other players to point out hey i haven't got anything can i have my share so it's not you don't have to sort of dilly dally and wait for wait for someone to uh, or, or even you don't even have to offer your loot to someone you can just hope that no one notices assuming you're playing a sort of character who's more into gathering all the loot for himself sort of like a thief who surreptitiously carries everything with him 